just what a starboard port which is the sides of the board right side and the left side um upwind downwind so okay. that's going up with the wind and then coming <laughs> back down with the wind yeah. and uh tacking and jibing so tacking okay. is when you go through the wind uh, to okay. turn direction and jibing is going when you're going with the wind to turn direction so okay. you tack when you're going upwind and when you're coming downwind you jibe okay so i think okay. if you know this it's kind of uh, just basic enough to have a communication like to understand as well it's kind of taxing to be honest because uh, you don't have the freedom to do what you want to do and you're confined into spaces because generally i mean if you have a bad day or something i like to go out you know just take a walk yeah. around the outside have a different mindset and you know come back on fresh the next day or go out for a meal but yeah. when you're in a bio bubble um, everything kind of like you know um you kind of like holding your thoughts inside it, it doesn't feel free like you know it's not the same it's pretty hard i mean we did a bio bubble in musana and then straight we came back and did one again for tokyo so back to back kind of taxing but yeah you it's something that you can't control and yeah. um, when you can't control it there's nothing you can really do about it you just yeah. need to live with it and you know find solutions for it so that's how we took it and it's kind of hard like i can't explain it it's like basically isolation in it's a yeah. it's a free jail i would say i would keep it that way uh, it's kind of like a Make free money. jail yeah and uh, we're not in for a punishment but you're in for doing something so yeah it's okay. that's that's the best i could say in india we're kind of forced into that rat race of life where you know it's just you finish school do a bcom or a doctor or a lawyer you become yeah. do an undergrad and then a postgrad but for becoming an athlete i think it's what your parents recognize um your capabilities when they see you as a young, when you're young and i'm sure I mean I don't mean to be coming off really rude or something but some people don't really make the cut and they have to within themselves realize that you know okay fine this is not my journey and I have to find the other path I mean you can give yourself time like 3 to 5 years in yeah. the sport dedicated and then make that call I I'm okay with yeah. that but you also have to have the communication with your parents like you know saying okay um uh, this is what i want to do and i will do this but if you see me slacking off anywhere you correct me once you correct me twice and the third time you pull the plug and say you know yeah. it's time to get back to the normal mundane life of you know the rat race i would say yeah. um So yeah, the thing is for even for me it was a pretty tough challenge with my my father especially. My mother is a little more supportive. <laughs> uh she gave me the freedom and she said, you know, sailing is for you. You're destined to do this. Uh and she supported me a lot more. I'm I'm a lot more in the sense she she never gave me that tug of war with what I had with my father. Like yeah. my father always said like, you know, finish your education you need a backup you need to do this you need to do that and i i don't i don't see what he's saying is wrong but yeah. i think when uh in a sport like what we do which is sailing and it's very niche it's yeah. extremely hard to balance uh you know education and training because you we already so far behind in the game okay because for example in hockey you have like guys like uh, manpreet you have guys like preej yeah. uh, desh who have been in the sport for 12 years and yeah. when they see a budding youngster coming in the knowledge that they can pass is phenomenal it's it's incredible like uh, the knowledge the experience the guidance is there but in a sport like what we do unfortunately vishnu netra gana and myself yeah are the first people to do what india has never done yeah absolutely so 
when it comes to something like that we have to recognize that you know okay fine we are the kind of we have to be become like you know manpreet and shri jayesh and all those guys rupinder all those guys sitting in the team where you know you can pass knowledge down to the new yeah. coming guys because you want to bring up the nation see the goal for us is to carry the flag on the top step of a podium at every event we attend yeah. so it's things are like that where you need to um, we tell ourselves and i think that balance was kind of hard because we were so far behind and we were trying to achieve things that people haven't achieved so yeah it was a big uh, hassle here and there with uh, my father but yeah support system is 100% required um and i'm really grateful that over the years the last 6 um, 7 8 years i've built a super team around me i have a brilliant coach i've been working with for the last 4 and a half years um my trainer has been the same for 4 and a half years a massive okay. shout out to bunny and shivani as well so uh, yeah so the whole structure the team is there and then of course kana i can't do anything without him so we've been he's been with me for the last 11 years so on this journey so gala my journey we started sailing um 2011 okay starting of 2011 together okay so yeah and it's so like even our parents everyone like the support system like i said if your child is willing to put in their mind and say okay fine this is what yeah. i want to do i'm sure um they will slip i mean there's no way that he's not going to fall off the cliff i mean there will be some distraction but uh, there'll be a time when like you know that changes everything and you know they decide that's yeah. what i want to do so like you said yeah. support system is really important and the right guidance like is also really important about kana yeah. yeah 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 for sure uh one thing i like about him uh is extremely um humble hard working and uh, dedicated to the sport one thing i don't like about him uh, <laughs> his ocd about few things <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean um i'm sure we all know that sailing is a wind driven sport and the wind is never yeah. consistent Uh, yeah. and there's a small oscillation that happens in the wind it's just being okay. aware of that and uh, right before the start to know which phase your wind is in so that okay. you can set yourself up self up tactically for the next move to basically take your gain in sailing words yeah uh, i think this is kind of like basic and uh, you are again there are variables which is tide current all those minor factors which come into play as well okay over the long run so you have to uh, have a consideration like you know it might be this or it might be that so and uh, when it comes to technique i mean everyone has their own um okay. you develop your own technique and their own style of you know i mean the out the outline is going to be the same but you might have a small change in in the like you know in the maneuver which comes to your comfort at the end of it so i would never say that you need to have this but you can always have two three styles yeah. for different scenarios which you know might be the game changer uh, one of the articles that i had read was basically this comes under that is that uh, like there is a kind of a weight balance that you and gana have to need to particularly to weigh to balance out like maybe yeah. close to 160 kg so like could you yeah. just give an insight into what what that is exactly and why do you need maybe to be 80 80 or something in that sense yeah um so what really happens in sailing is because it's a wind driven sport and there's a sail um we as humans are the counterbalance of the boat okay um so we um use the leverage of our weight to keep the mast pointing upright so basically it's looking okay. at the sky and uh, if you are lighter you tend to depower as the wind increases way quicker than the rest of the guy opponents that you're racing with 
Okay. So okay. it's a very setup oriented boat. Like you have yeah. so many things. It's like it's like if you know what Formula One comes into, it's you have a lot of uh, setups that you can change to keep the balance yeah. of the boat uh, depending on the wind condition. So yeah, uh, basically the weight is because you need to be counter balancing and uh, you can carry more power in the lighter wind rather than depowering much sooner. So the idea of having the we put on weight was because of that, yeah. Because I think in, in between you had to put on close to 7 to 8 kgs I think or something. So during part. lockdown, I, I made yeah. a massive jump. Uh, I put on I think just under 10 kilos in okay. 6 months. So lockdown was good for me. I mean, I liked <laughs> it. I, I had no problem. I was just working out and eating. So that was good for me. I, I had a good time with that. So. I mean, it, okay. it came into favor a little bit. Um, I think it's all... So, what we need to understand is every sport has a base. A basic yeah. base level that they have. And I think the difference what I'll be able to bring in or Kana or Vishnu and Etra is the basic that we we telling them and conveying it to them and showing them that this is how it's done because it's and the inputs that we give them will be far different than just another sailor in from the country because okay. we've seen it we've experienced what the difference is and i guess it's those small corrections and you know the way you present it out to them which uh will make a difference in understanding like i can break down every maneuver step by step by step where you can combine it into one. So, uh, I think that's how we have to, you know. Now, that's that's the game changer, I think, for most uh, the guidance that you can give it. Because we've been in far more situations and uh, brought ourselves out of those situations do, doing things that work. So, okay. we kind of know that it works and that's the information that we're passing down. It's not just new knowledge trying to pass. Uh, it's helped me be a little more calmer, especially um, because uh, I learned to trust the process. Like I was saying before, I was a very result-oriented person, yeah. um, and uh, become far more progressive in the terms of you know I'm only bothered about my goals. Uh, just thinking of the small boxes every day to make sure that I become better tomorrow. And um, so sailing has actually taught me a lot of things. It's taught me to be independent. It's like you know. From a very young age, like, you know, you, because my mom and dad work as well. And yeah. uh, they were not traveling with me everywhere as well. So, I had to okay. take care of my own things. I started becoming more responsible. I used to organize uh, accommodation, stay. Everything is done by me. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's a process. Like, you know, we learned all these small, small things. Learned how to pack containers. Learned how to stuff the trucks, you know, when they're moving in India, yeah. packing containers when you're moving outside India. So, we learned a whole bunch of things and we learned to be, the best is our own mechanics for the boat. So, okay. we learn a lot of skills. We know how to stitch. We know how to cook. <laughs> nice. We know how to give massages. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's the whole combination. I think it's taught me so much in life. But the most important thing it taught me is to trust someone who is your teammate and I think yeah. that is something which is which we all lack I mean a little to, a, to an extent but that blind trust of you know just saying okay you got it under control I believe in you and I trust your calls for the race or you know decisions that we make as a team for our future Yeah, so I mean, for me as a person, like this is my uh, mindset. I, it might not apply to others. So yeah. for me, I work extremely hard physically during my off season, especially. Okay. And uh, so that when I'm on season, I don't really go to the gym too much. Okay. But I just go maybe, say, four sessions in a month or five sessions in a month. Because I, I, I on the off season I, I have to get extremely high uh, 
fitness i push myself to an extreme level so that i feel really comfortable and my mind is not saying okay your body is tired your body is weak or something like that that's how i approach the sport and uh, when it comes so the mental aspect is something i'm still working every day and uh, because i think um i sorted out one problem which is my fitness a little bit i'm still getting fitter but uh mentally there's a lot of things that can factor in which can you know stimulate anything in your brain and um yeah it's i would say firstly is being in the present okay living this moment that you're in and being so conscious about what your you know what your surroundings are and okay. everything about it like everyone is either in the past or either in the future like okay if i Fair enough. Yeah. they're not here they're not in the moment and i think that's one thing that's uh, made me very uh, very different over the last few years where i started making myself feel present and okay. instead of worrying about you no know, oh what will happen or should this happen or something like that yeah so for me it's kind of like that where i'm now trying to be more present more active so i practice i do meditation i'm not good at it but i'm working on it and i'm trying to get better and better and better um and uh, i think it mental like you we all need a psychologist who we resonate with who we can work with because there are some things that you know they can help us uh, cope with like i never used to um let's say i mean i never used to really journal much i used to write but yeah. now i become very active on my writing because yeah. i feel like it's a way of me venting out what's on my head and i feel lighter i feel clearer and you know i i don't really have to read it but yeah, i feel like right. I, i i feel like i've been heard rather yeah. like because yeah. not, not everyone i want to speak about it to and uh, it's not something that i want to speak about so i try it a lot now and uh, i kind of enjoy that process like you know it feels good and uh, yeah i think that's basically what it is like i feel really uh, like I, i i had guidance for me to start writing so things these are the small things and everyone has their cues everyone has their own way that they need to find like some people find uh, running as you know a way of calming themselves down yeah some people find different ways like meditation helps me writing helps me and of course like you know always uh, the downtime of you know spending time with my family really is another thing that uh, really calms me and, you know keeps me in <clears throat> like tells me why i'm doing what i'm doing basically like Italy gada what straight up i don't even need to think about it so. <laughs> um unfortunately um at this point we kind of are pushed back kana and myself okay. were starting our own sailing school where uh we'll be able to go meet school kids have talks uh ask okay. them to come try sailing enjoy the sport for a day at least okay and um, see from there you know how it goes because um i think uh it's a sport that you're not going to understand by watching it's an experience okay. sport which you fall in love with that you kind of have to get into it that way so yeah and it all comes down to, i mean so i told you like we we want to start our own school we want to um have our own team like a gana varun sailing team where we will be coaching kids guiding them telling them what it is and hopefully one day we we'll create a national and world champion so that's our our plan and goal over the next few years i mean we were want we did want to start uh this year but uh, everything got pushed and you know now time is again crunched with the asian games coming up next year and yeah and, um uh the olympics in 3 years so it's all time crunched Hmm. but yeah um, let's see i mean we still do have a little our own battles as well with the federation which is normal 
I guess in every sport. <laughs> Expected, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So again, to deal with all of that and have a school is unfair to the services or you know what we claim that we can provide. So yeah, okay. I think that's the only way that you know I can promote the sport personally because um, again we have our differences, the federation yeah. ourselves, but we are not bigger than the sport. The sport is always number one. So in respect of the sport. Uh, we'll just wait, hold our horses a little more, get a little more experience, maybe uh, a little more uh, credibility, and come back uh, stronger with the school and everything. So with that, we come to an end with the questions. Um, so I just wanted to thank you so much for your time. Um, no problem. It's and been good from to do this. me and BTS are very grateful for it also, as well as getting an exposure to sailing and also people knowing about it, which is. Kind of important for us because we want to pick these sports and tell people that there is something that exists like that. There are people who work hard towards it. So we are very, we are all grateful from BTS, and we thank you again so much for your time. Oh, uh, it's an absolute honor. I mean, thank you guys for all this. Uh, hopefully, one day you guys could come sailing with us, and uh, yeah, I hope <laughs> we'll uh, be able to show you some, like you know, make you have fun on the water. Absolutely, we will keep that in mind. Definitely. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have fun. Okay. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Just bye.